Hi, DF team, exclamation point, as a self-proclaimed lover of both LCD screens and game streaming, John. I was hoping John could offer some best practices and settings for Quest 3 Airlink. Uh, while Ooh. latency and stuttering are not an issue, image quality is. Darker scenes, especially in a game like Beat Saber, can turn into a mush over the Airlink. Really? I've tried increasing the bit rate, but that made little to no difference to my eyes. Is there any hope for us wireless warriors? Or are confounding cables the only way to stop the smear? I don't know about the, the question, but I love the way it's written. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. exclamation point. You don't really have an issue I with... I don't have an issue. Do, have you played Beat Saber? No. No. It's the only one I've not played because I, I don't... Is it literally just a plug-and-play experience then for um, the Air Link? So there's basically three ways to do it, right? right? And I've had different... six. So there's the built-in Oculus Quest connection, right? right? That, in my experience, is actually the worst. I've had the worst image quality from it, and I get some weird jitters with it, so I don't really use it. Then there's virtual desktop, which has, in my experience, been the best. Right. Like, that's that's really clean image quality. It's super reliable, and it looks awesome. Is it? So there's actual image quality differences. Yes. Is there motion quality differences? No, motion quality is the same, usually. Right. Although no I got some more, or I got, a, I, get, I got a little bit of stuttering sometimes with the meta right. one. Or that I didn't see in virtual desktop. Okay. But only in like, like they were both mostly smooth. Half-Life Alex had some weird issues with the meta one versus virtual desktop where it's flawless for me. Mm. Uh, the difference more is like the, the built-in one had like a softer, almost like over sharpened look to it. Hmm. Whereas the virtual desktop one looked like just native HDMI like input to my eyes. But then the third one is the steam link that they right. had recently. Okay. And that one's kind of falls in between. It looks it looks really good, but I found like I had a little bit more stutters in it. Even on a simple game, like I tested Half Life Two VR, and that was my test bed for looking for fluidity. And there, right. I would get these little tiny, occasional little hiccups. Like they're pretty small, like probably like single frame, like little. But in VR, it's like really, really annoying. Uh, so virtual desktop has been the way for me. But I haven't actually. Oh, they all work fine. I haven't had like a connectivity issue, but I have found that it is the walls in our house are very thick, and if I walk outside of the range of those things, video quality degrades very quickly, and then it's eventually just like get back into the zone, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's talking here about increasing the bit rate, not helping with Beat Saber, but does it help you? In yeah, any way? it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The higher the bit rate. Um, definitely helps uh i use max bitrate with the uh what is it vp1 encoding or av1 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 not vp oh, then it's gotta be good av1 encoding AV1. which is supported through um uh virtual desktop and obviously the 40 40 series cards maybe that's it in hardware av1 is quite a lot better than what you could do otherwise yeah so. av1 will have a com you know basically your bit rate will go much further in terms of image quality compared to you know h264 and hevc i guess so yeah i mean just fiddling around like I, with virtual desktop i have zero complaints everything just just is perfect in terms of image quality like if you I think in very specific situations, you can maybe just slightly detect video artifact, but it's really hard to see. And largely, it looks native. I remember when I showed when Mark from My Life in Gaming visited, he did he didn't really believe me on this. He almost believed me because I'm one of the only people that he trusts in terms of judging image quality, but he was still skeptical. And then he tried it, and he just kept for the rest of the day. He's like, I don't understand how this is possible. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. How is this possible? Like he didn't uh, could not believe how good it looked, mm -hmm. and that's my experience with it. And his experience, he went and bought one. Mm, <laughs> so wow, same experience. Wow, we're all on board with this though. So, but obviously, again, if your if your router is not up to the task, yeah, uh, problems. I think it's it's transferring a lot of data really fast. And if your router has an issue, if there's a connection issue, if the signal's not strong enough, then yeah, the experience probably will not be great. So, what I did actually is I added, I had a spare router. that So I had the one in the downstairs. So I mostly would play downstairs, my PC's upstairs. But I also put an extra spare router that I just plugged in 
upstairs in my main gaming room that nothing's really connected to it except for it's like part of a mesh i guess kind of setup but it's a, a second router that i tied into the network and mm-hmm. i use that if i want to do vr in my room so it's like a second vr access point and it's like as long as you have those set up it, you get good coverage but that's cool. really important 